Now, I don't usually do like reaction videos or that kind of stuff on this channel, but I just could not help myself when Nick Beardy has sent me this article. Three tabletop RPG safety tools and why they're important. A look at three popular safety tools that tabletop role-playing game groups use to facilitate the telling of stories with dark and mature themes. Tabletop role-playing game story. This is from the Screen Rant, by the way. Jesus. Tabletop role-playing game storylines, whether in classic heroic fantasy system like Dungeons and Dragons or horror RPGs like Vampire the Masquerade, can cover a wide variety of topics. Some lighthearted, others touching on mature themes like violence, sex, gore, abuse, wartime casualties, or the phobias slash traumas of players. Safety tools such as the X card, lions and veils, or roses and thorns can empower gaming groups to responsibly play through RPG campaigns with these mature topics. Letting them pause or slow down their game session whenever in-game events lead to real-world stress. To begin with, my sweet, sweet children, um, if you're going to a mature setting, the GM usually tells you beforehand, like, hey, it's going to be mature. And if you can't handle that, don't join a goddamn mature dungeon crawl. Like, I don't... I just... Mm, 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 mm. Don't, don't like. Okay. An important point to clarify. RPG safety tools and trigger warnings it begins are not designed to censor or restrict the sorts of so, the sorts restrict the sorts of stories people can tell in RPG rather they're the RPG equivalent of safety belt or brakes in a car <laughs> with safety tools people can feel more at ease telling scary violent sexy or dark stories in a game session knowing they can call for a timeout if things go in a direction they're not going to enjoy. Safety tools also function like the G, PG, PG-13, and R ratings assigned to movies, giving players fair warning that a game session will address mature matters. Safety tools can also be canaries in a coal mine, but for toxic RPG players. <laughs> if a player in a new game group goes on an angry, petulant rant about the presence of safety tools, game masters will be... <laughs> Game masters will be prepared mentally to stop any bullying or disruptive behavior they may engage in. Ooh, those toxic D&D &D players. <laughs> so it's like he's saying this is like a, a dog whistle for fucking violent D&D &D players. If you see your game's going to have safety tools in place. I hate the term trigger warning. Not even us, like, PTSD-ridden veterans use the term fucking trigger warning. Jesus. It may be because I'm looking at this in a military mindset, and I, I get that. Not everyone has a military mindset. I, I understand that. But, just... Okay. <sighs> Related to... Dungeons and Dragons, why a murder hobo, what a murder hobo is, and why they're bad. First time. <laughs> different safety tools can be used in different ways, depending on the attitudes and needs of an RPG gaming group. When introducing any safety tool to a gaming session, however, game masters should always make sure their players know how to use these safety tools during said session. They should also clarify that no player ever needs to explain why they're invoking safety tools. The GM and other players should trust their reasons are valid. Finally, tabletop GMs should worry if their players don't use a safety tool during a game session. The presence of the safety tool is what matters. Stressed out players should always be free to call for a break or a change without feeling that they're ruining the game for their fellow players. RPG safety tool number one. The X card. This is like the fucking stress cards in the army. It's just... <laughs> I'm stressed. Your story. Alright. Of all the RPG safety tools out there, the X card, described in an article on Golden Lasso Games, 
is the simplest and in some ways the most foolproof. A D&D DM or tabletop RPG game master places a card to scrub the big X on the center of their table. If a player touches or picks up the X card during a scene in a role-playing game session, the GM stops or skips over the scene. No questions asked. This is like, this is like the fucking escape button for skipping through cutscenes. Like I don't want to see this click. Like, if, if you're if you're joining a game master or a dungeon master, whatever you want to call them, and you're there to go through the story. In stories, I know it's a form of escapism. I get that. But you're in a story. You're there to play in the world the Game Master gives you. And yeah, I mean... If something's going bad, and again, go, hey DM, um, I'm feeling uncomfortable. I'm like, oh, what is it? Oh, it's a scene right here. No problem. I'll skip over that. You know, an X card? There's not a skip button for D&D. Like, ha have some balls. Go, hey, DM, um, I'm feeling uncomfortable with this particular situation. Can we just push through this? Do you mind? No, oh, no problem. I'll do a D20 roll and see what happens. Up you don't just reach over and like, you know, like lock eyes and go, skip. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? RPG safety tool number two, lines and veils. Most of the time, a gaming group will use the lines and veils safety tool before an RPG campaign or individual game session starts. Although, there's nothing stopping the group from introducing or revisiting the safety tool in the middle of a D&D session. The lines and veils safety tools is great for preemptively identifying topics players and GMs aren't comfortable including in their game topics such as harassment, abuse, torture, etc. Players can catalog a topic as a line they don't want to appear in the game at all, or, or, or alternatively, catalog it as a veil if they prefer to see what happened off screen or describe with minimal detail. Is, is this how fragile D&D &D gaming is nowadays, where we need these things? I mean, but back in the day, uh, we, we never used these things. Like, if some course popped up you're like mm, well and you dealt with it it's part of the story if someone gets captured and gets tortured you fucking roll with it it's part of the story it may be uncomfortable you may not like it but you gotta fucking deal with it because that's how your character evolves that's how your character becomes something bigger than what you first wrote for them there's more to all of this than your feelings you're on an adventure. You're there to craft a character and see them evolve and mold into something new or die, one or the other. But lines and veils, I mean, there's 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 definitely DM or GM cringe for sure, like magical realm type bullshit. But then you call like, hey, 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 stop that. Like, if you have a voice at the goddamn DM table. You're not paying for this shit. Like, hey, DM, that's fucking gross. Quit it. Because you'll, you'll know... <laughs> You'll know if the DM's going magical realm on you. If, if, if the wizard pops up, you know, you know. Call him out. Hey, GM, that's gross. Quit it. <laughs> Fade to black, something. This, Lines and Veils, it's not even needed. It's, it's, it's not even needed. It was really not. I mean, you'll. Why not have to wear your character? is uncomfortable with blank and the DM learns through your character. You're, 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 whatever. Stars and wishes. This should be good. The star and wishes safety tool was introduced by a blog writer on the website The Gauntlet RPG Community Group. Famous for making RPGs like Trophy, a deconstruction of the famous RPGs like Nuns and Dragons, the Hearts of Woolen and Powered by the Apocalypse. As a modified version of the Roses and Thorns safety tool, Star and Wishes is designed to be positive and affirming, a way for players and GMs to give constructive feedback to each other post-game without feeling called out. When a player gives a star to someone else, they just... Here's your golden sticker. It's about... When a player gives a star to someone else, they describe a moment in the game they really appreciated. Good role playing, a clever tactic, considerate behavior, etc. 
When a player shares a wish with the table, they describe something they'd like to see more of in future games. What the fuck? You don't need this shit. Ain't no one need this shit. Use your goddamn voice at the table. You don't need golden stickers and lines and veils to make your point known. Whether you're a DM, a GM, or a player, just say, hey, Gabraka, I liked how you did that. Make, make it real. Make it considerate. Talk to the person. Hey, I liked how you did this. That was fucking dope. Don't give him a fucking golden sticker. This isn't kindergarten. Is, it, is this how players are nowadays? A bunch of thin-skinned fucking people who want gold stars and wishes? Are you fucking kidding me? Like, is is this like a a, 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 a trend of the modern world where you need fucking stress cards and fucking wish and uh, roses and thorns? What is what is that? Hold on. We're going on a trip on my favorite rocket ship. Stand by. Okay, so more or less, roses and thorns is something where you say what you like. It's the sandwich method. This is the sandwich method for D and D. Roses and thorns, really. Likes and don't likes. And uh, this, this is this is like player railroading. I don't want to see this, this, and this, and this makes me feel uncomfortable. Motherfuckers, you're on a crafted adventure. Shit's gonna happen to your character. Most importantly, remember it's your character. There's tons of shit I've had to deal with in a game that I didn't like, but I can differentiate fantasy land and real world. Why can't everybody else? This, like, it's it's not on you. We're not we're not making it happen to you personally. You're in a story with someone who doesn't exist. Your character does not exist except in the story you're in. Your character ain't you. <laughs> okay, fuck, dude. In D and D. Or the Veil Red TPTRPG or Pathfinder, whatever you all playing, someone's gonna fucking die. What are you gonna go like 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 fucking uh, lines? No death. My mother died. It makes me uncomfortable. Everyone fucking dies. I've had best friends die. My drill sergeant died a couple months back. Well, death makes me uncomfortable. Death is a part of life. D and D is an extension of life, but you play it with a fake person in a fake setting with dragon swords and fucking wizards that die to slab damage. These tools are dumb. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna put it right there. These tools are dumb. You, you don't you don't need these tools. I mean, stars and wishes. If I'm in a D and D game and someone tries to give me a fucking gold star, I will literally slap that shit out of your fucking hand. <laughs> no, no, thank you. I'd rather you talk to me, whether you're a player or a team, and say, hey, blank was cool. Hey, I enjoyed that. It's called discussing things. You don't need a, a safety tool called stars and wishes to talk to your fellow players about what they did and how you like what they did, or saying, hey, I didn't like this. Even then, toughen the fuck up. Yeah, there'd be things you don't like too fucking bad, bro. Like, you can't go, I don't like how you did that. You need to stop it. They're allowed to play their character how they see fit. It's not... You can't tell them, you can't play that way. It's one of my lines. You can't play that way. Everyone plays their character how they damn well see fit. And groups who use this, these methods here are the most neutered, non-fun things I can, I can think of. A stress card, uh, a, a line in the sand for what you want to play with. Are you? That's just fucking like hobbling your DM or your GM to, to do the story they want to do. Like, it's, it's stupid. It, it, this is all stupid. How about you be a goddamn adult and use your goddamn voice like a normal person will? Do you think back in the day in the fucking 90s we had stress cards? In the early 2000s we had fucking lines and veils? No, we would say, hey, that's fucking weird. Stop it. And if they kept doing it, you left. You said, fuck this, I'm out. You find a new group. Like, if this is a complete group of randos, you just cut, you fucking cut the line and you go find something else. Why well, most of us play with people they know, play with friends. Yeah. This is childish. All oh, this is childish. Really. Be an adult. Be be a Dungeons and Dragons adult. A D&D-A.
if you will. An RPG, a role-playing game adult. Use your fucking voice. Beat. <laughs> this is stupid. But fucking Nick, why'd you guys send me this shit? You know I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna, it's gonna make me angry. God. And he's gonna send more stuff now too, probably. Look, my little birdies, my little canaries out there, just be a fucking adult. Talk to your DM. Talk to your GM. Talk to your fellow players. Be an adult. Don't give out gold stars. Give verbal accolades. A, a player telling you, or you telling a player, hey, that was really cool, or I like how you, I like how you play your character, will do far more than going, I give you a gold star. Don't do that shit. It's fucking cringe. Father, it was cringe. <laughs> it, it wasn't even kick, father. It was cringe. Like, don't, don't do that shit. Be, be an adult. Be a person. Gr grow thicker skin. Get the fuck over it. You're playing D&D, &D, not My Little Pony fucking Garden Adventures. Fuck, dude. Stop sending me this shit. <laughs> play D&D, &D, play your games, and don't be a little bitch. Garbro out.